Hello, my name is Shiraz and welcome to my English and Maths channel. Uh, today we are going to have a look at this very interesting poem, Half Past Two, by Ursula Askem van Thorpe. Um, I must say that this is one of my uh, favorite poems. Uh, let's have a look. Um, so, you know, this boy here, he's sitting all alone in this classroom. Why do you think he's sitting all alone here? And, you know, the time here, half past two, and you, you can see a face there in the clock. Okay. And what do you think about this teacher here? What she looks like, you know? Does she uh, look very nice, polite, or, uh, you know, busy i don't know okay and have a look at this clock here so this is uh, similar to this clock here but it also has two hands okay and this boy here he's kind of you know lost he's looking outside the window and he's he's, he's kind of uh into his um imagination or or maybe something like that okay uh right so, think about these pictures and then we'll move on to the poem. Okay. Right. <clears throat> so, half past two. So, that is the time here, half past two. Once upon a school time. So, the very beginning of the poem, you know, once upon, it's like a, uh, like a fairy tale, you know, once upon a time. And you can see that school time you know it's there's no space here so it, that represents childish language okay once upon a school time so it's a it's a very relatable point because we can all uh remember um our, our you know the, the time that we we spent at school um he did something very wrong so you can see these three words, um, uh, they use capital letters, so there is an extra emphasis um, that he did something very wrong. So it was not a little thing, it was quite a big thing. So the poet here is using a uh, third person, okay? So the poet is, um, is, a, is a narrator here. So he's narrating all uh, this whole incident here. Okay, he did something very wrong. I forget what it was. So you know, the, we we cannot we cannot remember what it was. You know, but that is not important. The important thing is that whatever he did was very very wrong. Okay. So this word here, forget, it, it also represents the, you know, the forgetfulness of, uh, uh, of the teacher. Uh, so she's probably quite busy all day, so, uh, you know, she, she may forget um, quite a few things. Okay? So, <clears throat> and she said... He had done something very wrong. So it was actually she, you know, who said it. So she here is capitalized. So so this uh, this is a very, very important person. It's like, a, you know, figure of authority uh, in the mind of the child. Um, you know, almost like, a, you know, like a godly figure uh, in his imagination. You know, someone who has a lot of power. So... She said he had done something very wrong. So if she said it, that he had done something very wrong, so it means that he had done something very wrong. Um, so you can see here there's a repetition here, something very wrong. So there's an extra emphasis on, on the fact that um, he did something very wrong. So he did a terrible mistake or something, but we, we can't remember what it was. And this is why must and must stay in the schoolroom till half past two. So if we go back to this picture here, so you now you can realize that he he's actually got detention. 
So he needs to stay in the room, in the classroom, until half past two. So all the other students have gone now. So the teacher says, okay, you must stay. So the word must here also represents um, um, authority that, you know, the, you don't have any other choice. You, you've got to stay in that room until half past two. So we can see that uh, <clears throat> the, the whatever he did was really serious, and uh, this is why there's a repetition, and you know the letter has been capitalized as well, uh, which shows that he had done something very serious and very something very wrong. Um, but interestingly, the event is not mentioned, so. That uh, you know kind of emphasizes uh, the child's innocence, um, you know. So uh, the event is not mentioned. You know, otherwise, uh, you know, if the teacher could remember what it actually was, but that's not important. It's just the important thing is that uh, whatever he did was very wrong, and it's the teacher who decides that whatever he did was very wrong. And then the teacher cannot remember either, so it's the forgetful nature of the of the teacher as well. So in a way, you know, this poem is about detention. But I think the the poet uh, here is having a go at the the education system. Okay, so we'll see we'll see um, later on, you know, in the in the poem. Being cross, she had forgotten, she hadn't taught him time. So being cross. So, so the, the teacher was so much cross. She was so much angry. Okay? Well, cross is not so much angry. It's, it's mild anger. Uh, but, you know, she was, she was angry. That's why she gave him uh, detention. So... So because she was angry, she had forgotten. So once again, you know, there's a repetition here, forget, forgotten. So the, you know, forgetful nature of the teacher. And it also represents that, you know, when we are uh, angry, we cannot think, um, you know, clearly. We don't have that, uh, you know, kind of rationality. So she had forgotten, she hadn't taught him time so time here is also very much important so she hadn't taught him how to read the clock so he wouldn't know what it, what when it was going to be half past two so so that he could go home so <clears throat> so for the teacher it's a very little thing you know she had forgotten that she hadn't taught him time but for the for the boy for the little child it was a huge thing in his um, imagination so, you know, the, the, <clears throat> the poem has a, you know, it's a quite easy, it has very easy language, but it has a, you know, like a complicated structure. And this is, um, this also represents the, the child's brain as well, because, the, you know, the child cannot cope with all that structure. Um, and there is, you can see, there's no rhyme schemes. So it's quite irregular. Okay, so the length can see the length of lines is also quite irregular uh, okay <clears throat> he was too scared at being wicked to remind her okay so this line is a very very important line and uh, one of my favorite lines uh, in this whole poem that he was too scared so the word here like too scared it, it was not like a little bit scared he was too scared uh, so you know, we, we shouldn't be we shouldn't be scared of the teachers. You know, we should uh, love uh, our teachers. You know, so that we can we can learn. So, but he was quite scared at being wicked to remind her. So he was too too scared to remind her. And if he had reminded her, you know, he would have been wicked. Okay, so. So these are very strong words here, scared and wicked. So he, he was, you know, he just didn't remind her. 
So that means, you know, it was quite trivial for the adult, but it was an enormous thing for the child. You know, he was so scared at that time, and he didn't want to be the bad boy, you know. He didn't want to be wicked to, to remind her. <clears throat> so over here, you know, the, uh, the child trusts um, adults, you know, and he... He, he thinks that he will be right. Uh, so it's kind of, you know, the first stage of, of growing up. Um, but here, he, you know, the child uh, learns um, a very bitter experience, you know, about um, adults. Okay. <clears throat> he knew a lot of time. Okay. So it's not, it's not that he wasn't familiar with this idea, with this concept of time. He knew a lot of time, and now we will have a list here. He knew getting up time, time you were off time, getting to go home time, getting to home now time, and TV time. So there are so many different uh, kinds of times that he was uh, familiar with. Now you can see that there is no space between these words here. Okay, time you were off time. Uh, so. Uh, this represents the, the vague concept in the child's mind. And also, uh, this technique uh, of making up a new word from, uh, you know, by combining different words is called portmanteau. So the, child, the, the, the poet is using this technique over here to, to show vague concepts um, in the child, child's mind. Uh, so he hasn't got the, the distinct grammar yet. Okay, so he doesn't have a very clear concept of the world b beyond uh, all these times, you know, which are very personal and relevant times, you know, getting up time, TV time, and so on. All right, okay, let's move on to the next one. And time for my kiss time. Okay, so now this is a very big contrast, you know. So Time for my kiss time, and if we go back, you know, if we have a look at the, at his relationship, you know, uh, with the teacher, he was too scared, and the word wicked here. So, it's, you know, the the poet is using contrasts to highlight, uh, you know, the wickedness of the teacher, and also the love of his um, uh, grandma. So that was grand time. All the important times he knew. So for him, these are the important times, you know, the kiss time, the TV time, and, uh, you know, getting up time. All these times are very, very much important for him. So he's got, you know, the, all these concepts are still developing in his mind. All the important times he knew, but not half past two. He didn't know half past two. And why is that? Who's responsible for that? The teacher is responsible because there is the, the teacher hadn't taught him half past two, okay? So it's not the child's fault. It's actually the, the teacher's fault. So, you know, the, the poet is having a big, um, it's, it's, you know, like um, uh, she, she's very much uh, up against the education system in this point. He knew the clock face, okay? So he also knew the clock face, you know, if we go back. Here, so this clock, it looks like a face. So now, uh, the, the poet uh, further, uh, you know, <clears throat> elaborates uh, the concepts that the, the, the child has in his mind uh, about the, the concept of time. He knew the clock face, the little eyes, and two long legs for walking. So this is the, the image of the, of the time or of the clock in his mind. So it's very interesting that he's, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, using human characteristics uh, in order to understand the, this new concept. So, you know, different children might uh, learn in different ways, but this particular child is using human characteristics, characteristics um, using his own knowledge and imagination to understand the clock. Uh, so it's a very vague concept of, of time in his mind at the moment. 
and two legs, two long legs for walking. So he's using his current knowledge. Uh, but he couldn't click its language. So click here is, um, is an example of onomatopoeia. And here click means understand. So he couldn't really understand the language of the clock. He could, you know, see the, the, the eyes, the, the little eyes and long legs and uh, a face. Uh, but he couldn't actually read the clock, you know, when it was going to be half past two. So what he did, so he waited beyond once upon a, out of reach of all the time force and knew he had escaped forever. Okay, so now what happens is he's just waiting and waiting, he's just waiting and waiting, and he goes beyond all the times that we have in this real world, and he escapes, okay? So knew he had escaped forever. Now, we cannot escape uh, forever, but if for him, as, you know, for that time, it seemed that he had escaped forever from all, uh, all the time force, you know, the time for case, uh, time for school, and you know, all the time, time to go home, TV time, you know, from the reach of all of these time force, he had escaped. So now he's gone into his, into his imagination. Okay, into the smell of old chrysanthemums on her desk, into the silent noise his hangnail made, into the air outside the window, into ever. Okay, so if you can see all these three lines, they start with the same word, and that is into. And this skill, uh, this, sorry, this um, uh, device is called anaphora. Okay, so this emphasizes the, the length of time. So into the small smell, or da, 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 into the silent noise, da, 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 into the air. So it, you know, it emphasizes on the fact that the, the time is endless, you know. So into the smell of old chrysanthemums on a desk. So these are the flowers that she forgot on her desk. So once again, her forgetful nature, the flowers are still on her desk, and you can see her is capitalized, so she is a figure of, uh, of authority. Okay. Um, so he, in his imagination, you know, he's he's just gone into the smell of those flowers. So we can see the child's acute sense of smell. Okay, uh, which kind of you know dim diminishes with age. You know, when we become a bit older, then that sense of smell slowly, uh, you know, diminishes. But at that time age it is very acute and strong into the silent noise his hangnail made so he was making a you know very you know little noise like a sound from his um, hangnail okay so you know the skin next to the nail when you just try to you know scratch it so it makes a very very little um, sound so for him it is a noise because he cannot hear anything. So now this sense of, of hearing, okay? Um, into the silent noise, this is an example of ox, oxymoron, oxymoron. So you, we cannot have a silent noise. The noise uh, has a sound. So this is uh, another device that the, the, the poet has used. Um, um, you know, another example could be uh, living dead, for example, or small crowd or dark light. So these are examples of oxymoron. So we use oxymoron to create, you know, uh, drama or also um, to make the, the writer stop and think and wonder. Okay, so that is the the um, the function of oxymoron here. So into the silent noise his hangnail made, so now he can hear that sound as well. Okay, uh, 
into the air outside the window. So he is now physically, he has physically moved from uh, the classroom to, to the air outside the window into ever. So it, it's like that he has uh, moved from that place into uh, forever. You know, he's, he's not going to come back. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so this line over here, if we can go back to this line, please. And knew he had escaped forever into the smell. So at the end of this, uh, this line here, it doesn't stop. So it goes into the, the sentence, you know, it goes into the next line here. Okay, so this um, technique or device is called enjambment. Okay, so that is another poetic device that she has used uh, to um, to um, to show an ongoing situation. You know, it hasn't stopped. It's like a, it's ongoing thing. Okay, let's move on to the next part now. So now, what happens is, so he's gone. He's gone into his imagination. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, all of a sudden, and then, my goodness, she said. So she said, my goodness. So this is uh, <laughs> like a you know, very profound effect on, uh, on the child, you know, when the teacher says, my goodness. So and what, she, what she does is scuttling in. So it's not like that he's uh, you know uh, walking in um, in a nice manner he she's she's like running in very quickly okay and what she says I forgot all about you so once again repetition of the word forget forgot forgotten uh, so she admits she admits that she is too busy and this is why she has forgotten all about her, him. And it also shows uh, that she's not uh, a very caring person. Okay. Uh, so run, run along. So now she says, she doesn't mention the time. She doesn't look at the clock. It's probably, um, you know, the time is probably past half past two now. Okay. Uh, so this is why she says, okay, run, run along or you'll be late. Otherwise, you will be late. So it's like um, a little bit of uh, you know kind response at the end, or you will be late. So this shows a little bit of kindness from the teacher. So maybe she has realized her mistake. That that is why she is being a little bit nice and kind. Maybe. Okay. Now this is a very little incident in the in the life of the the teacher. But for the child, it is a big experience, okay, and which has, uh, which may have um, a very uh, big impact on his life, okay. So this was quite irrelevant what he actually did, you know. But the the whole experience of that detention and the the you know the way the teacher behaved, uh, so that experienced. Uh, stayed with him so you know I would say that parents and uh, you know teachers and all the adults should be very careful when they speak to, uh, to children okay right so she slotted him back into school time so this word here slot is uh, you know there's a slot like um, you know there's a machine and you there's a slot in that machine and you put in the coins, okay? So uh, it's like a very mechanical word, okay? So that's what she did with the child. So she didn't care uh, whether he was, you know, in his imagination or, you know, he was late uh, or, you know, whatever it was. She just put him into... 
uh, a space, uh, you know, back to the real world from his imagination. So it was like a mechanical thing that she slotted him back into school time. Okay, <clears throat> so this school time, you know, coming back to school time, it shouldn't be a mechanical routine. It should be like, you know, something fun. Uh, and he got home in time for tea time. Now, tea time is, uh, is quite late. It's around 4 o'clock-ish. So that, that means that he was, uh, he was quite late, to be honest. Um, okay. So the teacher kind of rescued him from, uh, from his imagination, and she brought him back to the world that he understands. Okay. So which is school time, tea time, next time, uh, no time for that now time. So he's, he's, he's come, he's, he's now back uh, into the real world where he still needs to grasp and understand the concept of time, okay? <clears throat> but, Okay, so there's uh, this big but here. So after all this whole incident, you know, when he's, he's back in his real life, uh, he never forgot. So another forgot here, okay? But this time, this is uh, about the child. Before, all, the, all these, these verbs, forget and forgot, they were about the teacher, okay? So... It has a different meaning here now. He never forgot. So he never forgot that experience. Okay. Uh, so now this has a, a you know, negative impact on his life. Whereas for the teacher, the word forgot represented uh, her forgetful, uh, forgetful nature. Okay. Her being careless. Okay. But he never forgot how once by not nine time. So this in this incident, you know, now he is uh, is probably grown up. So, uh, in this incident, he didn't know the time. So, because of that, but he never forgot. He never forgot. And now, this incident, you know, remained in his memory. It became a lasting memory. But he, what he's saying now is that because of that incident, he escaped into the clockless land forever. Okay, so this is one of the things that is important from the incident, and he could never forget this, you know, that he, because he didn't know the time and what happened to him, he escaped from this real world uh, into uh, his imaginary world, into the clockless land forever. So this land here doesn't have a clock. It doesn't have any time. So, you know, if you if you start imagining, you know, you can imagine for hours and hours, and uh, it it feels like that the clock is not moving at all because in that world there's there's no clock. Okay. So he jumped out of the reality into his own imagination because he didn't know how to read the clock. Where, now, in that world here, you know, where there's no clock, where time hides tickless, waiting to be born. Okay? So the time in that world is hiding, tickless, and there's no tickless. Uh, so tickless means that there's no sound. Now, this is uh, probably another example of oxymoron. Okay, so in that world, the time had stopped. Okay, because it's waiting to be born. Now, this is a, uh, you know, a slightly complex idea. And we can understand it in, uh, in different ways. So one meaning could be uh, that for, for the child, uh, the time hasn't been born yet. Okay, so he still needs to learn the bitter experiences of life, okay? <clears throat> He's still in that beautiful world of his childhood where he doesn't have any, there, there are no boundaries to imagination. 
and uh, <clears throat> he doesn't know how to read the clock so you know he can for him time hasn't hasn't been born yet <laughs> 